You're listening to a podcast by the Center for Action and Contemplation. To learn more, visit cac.org. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel as written to us by Luke. At that time, Jesus came to Jericho, and he intended to pass through the town. And there was a man there named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector and a wealthy man. He was seeking to see who Jesus was, but he could not see him because of the crowd, for he was very short. So he ran ahead and he climbed a sycamore tree in order to see Jesus, who was about to pass by. When he reached the place, Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down quickly, for today I must stay at your house. And he came down quickly and received him with joy. When they all saw this, they began to grumble. He has gone to stay at the house of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood his ground and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have extorted anything from anyone, I repay it four times over. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a descendant of Abraham. The human one has come to seek and to save what was lost. This is good news from the Lord. I'm going to largely reread the first beautiful reading. It's one of my favorites in the whole Bible, and it's hidden away in the Book of Wisdom. I've used it often, even given it to people who hate themselves, and that's a lot of people, either by reason of abuse or gender or race or whatever. Seems like we find endless reasons to believe that we are unworthy. But listen to this. Before the Lord, this is from the Book of Wisdom, it's in your missalette. Before the Lord, the whole universe is as a grain on a scale, a drop of morning dew come down upon the earth. And nations think they're so powerful. The Bible says nations are just a grain of sand. They're all going to pass away. But you, Lord, you have mercy on all of them because you can do all things. You overlook people's sins that they may turn around. You love all things that exist. You loathe nothing that you have made. For had you hated it, you would not have created it. And how could a thing remain unless you willed it to exist? Or be preserved had it not been called forth by you? It seems to be a universal assertion. No exceptions. If it exists, God chose it to exist even bad people so-called. You spare all things because all things are yours. O Lord, lover of life, your imperishable spirit is in everything. It doesn't say in some things. It says everything. Don't try to make any exceptions. 
The black people don't have it. The gay people don't have it. The poor people don't have it. The handicapped people don't have it. We all have the imperishable Spirit of God. You may not, you must not make an exception. You rebuke us little by little. You warn us and you remind us of our sins that you, we may abandon our wickedness and believe in you, O Lord. So the little trials of our life are not punishments. They're trials to wake us up. So with that as the message, let's reread a little of the gospel. This is a favorite for many people. It's called the gospel for short people like me. And the short guy, his name's Zacchaeus. Now we're, the stage is set as someone who is unworthy, that we should not like, that we would mistrust. He was a chief tax collector. That means he's an oppressor of the Jewish people and a non-Jew. And he was a wealthy man. Can you make any connection there? Of course. How did he get wealthy? By overtaxing people. When he came climbing down the tree, he was earnest, sincere, it seems. He ran ahead, climbed the sycamore tree in order to see Jesus. And when he reached the place, Jesus looked up. And he said, Zacchaeus, come down quickly, for today I must stay at your house. And he came down quickly and received him with joy. Now when the people saw this, they began to grumble. So we have Jesus clearly, by his own invitation, eating at the house of a so-called sinner. Can you make any parallels to today? We're going to have a meal in a few minutes. Uh, I don't think Jesus would be interested in the least in weighing who of you is worthy and who of you is a sinner and who of you is not a sinner. You all are, and I am too. Just get over it. I'm afraid a politician just said that, but anyway. Then he stands his ground, and apparently we see he was a very good man, more generous than I am. I give half of my possessions to the poor. If I've extorted anything, I repay people four times over. Does anybody here do that? So first of all, he looks like a bad guy. By the end of the story, he's a good guy. We know he's a Gentile like us. That means not a Jew, an outsider. And Jesus invites himself for dinner and says, Today salvation has come to this house. This too, this man too, is a descendant of Abraham. Now it's very clear who the descendants of Abraham are, the Jews. He's just included an outsider in the group. And then gives his closing line to show what he's all about. I didn't come for the nice guys. I didn't come for the perfect people. You know why? Because there aren't any. The human one came to save what was lost. So it seems to me we'd be much more alive and awake and aware and uh, if we admitted that we were lost, that we don't get it, that we haven't been right, that we've made mistakes. That leaves the soul wide open to receive mercy and grace. And that's exactly what the first reading said. That this is what God is about. He shows equal favor to all, 
and all of our making of distinctions, deciding some are up and some are down, some are good and some are bad, are all by our own selfish criteria. Let's just rest inside of an infinite love that even we cannot comprehend and cannot receive. When we've received it totally, then perhaps we're in a position to tell other people who has it and who doesn't. And you'll see that even the worst of people still have one part of their life where they're loving. At least that's been my experience. And the best of people still have one part of their life where they're quite selfish like me. We're all in this together, brothers and sisters. And the kingdom will descend when we can stop seeking superiority, stop seeking status, because it doesn't mean anything to God. All the nations, the whole universe, is as a drop on the scales of eternity. So if the nations and the universe are a drop of sand on the scales of time, what are you and what am I? Hmm? To live inside of that natural humility is to live free, to live without any reason for comparison, competition, or judgment. Such a world is a world in which love can happen.